Good morning. Woo. And let me welcome you this morning to Victoria Baptist Church. It's great to have you with us this morning. If you're joining us online, then let me welcome you also to this service of worship. This morning, Tom Duncanson is going to lead the service. Woo! And, um, but I have a few notices, and I'm going to invite Tim, uh, Tom, Tim, Tom to come and uh, begin the service for us. But the first notice concerns Irene Amy. Some of you may remember Irene Amy. Her funeral will be taking place this week at Eastbourne Crematorium on Thursday at 4 p.m. Also, very sad news. Um, Elizabeth Scott passed away on Friday uh, uh, in the hospice. Elizabeth, absolutely delightful lady, and please do per- pray for Robert uh, as uh, he uh, grieves the loss of a, a, a lovely and wonderful wife. Also, uh, we're starting next week, we're going to start coffee again. So we're going to. Oh, there you go. Woo! <laughs> so we're going to start coffee again next week. Um, Please do, if you're able, and you remember, please bring your own cups, mugs. That makes it a bit easy, easier for us. Um, also, there's a service this evening at 6.30. It's a healing service led by John Glover. Also, there is a membership information evening this evening. If you, uh, at 5 p.m. downstairs, around the, go around the back, down the slope, and you'll find us around there. It's at 5 p.m. If you'd like to find out anything about uh, membership, at Victoria Baptist Church, you're welcome to come along. You don't need to have pre-booked. Just come and see. Uh, also, uh, and just a date for your diaries. It's not that far away. We have a, a special evening here uh, on the 19th of March, Friday evening, Faith, Hope and Forgiveness. Um, it's, the, it's an evangelistic evening. We are joining a number of churches locally. We'll give you more information about that in the coming weeks. But please do book that date in your diary, 7.30 uh, on the 19th of March. Faith, hope and forgiveness. And I think that might be everything. Just one more thing. I think it would be good if we would begin the service praying for uh, the situation in the Ukraine. We have a close connection with the church in Lebanon. And um, I know if the situation was reversed, we'd be very grateful for their prayers. So let's pray together. Let's commit this situation and these friends to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, we say that you are the sovereign God, that you are sovereign over the nations and over the hearts of all human beings. And we come before you, our great Father, almighty God, and ask that you would hear our prayer for this situation in the Ukraine. Father God, you alone know the motives and intentions and intrigues that are taking place. And we ask, Father God, that you would, that you would expose corruption wherever it, it is found, Father God, and that you would bring good for the, for the people of the Ukraine out of this situation. We ask, Father God, that you would bring a resolution to this situation, that it wouldn't. We ask, Father God, that it would not break out into violence. And we we ask for a political solution and and for wisdom for our leaders. And Lord, we do pray for Pastor Bogdan and Sergei and for this wonderful ministry in, in Lebanon. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them and upon all the churches throughout the Ukraine, that your Holy Spirit might work powerfully in people's lives and they might come to know the one who is the true Prince of Peace, the Lord of life and the Saviour of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Tom, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I trust that you're feeling well. Well, that was a bit of a deadpan, wasn't it, really? (laughs) Okay, well, we're here to to worship God. We're here to share together, and no matter how we feel, whatever's going on inside, we're coming to meet together with a God who knows us, who loves us, who cares for us, who has his loving arms around us and welcomes us into his presence. So I want to encourage you, however you're feeling, whatever state you're in at the moment, whatever you're worried about, whatever you're concerned about, that you just lay those things aside for the next hour and come into God's presence with an open heart and an open mind, and let him meet with you where you are.
Hannah, lead us in worship, please. Good morning. Um, would you like to all stand to your feet? Um, we're going to join in some worship together this morning. that your Holy Spirit would fall down and be upon us now as we worship you. Father, would you just make everything else in the week melt away and let us just wholly focus on you now as we praise you. Amen. Hey 
loving and a gracious God. Father God, we want to thank you for the privilege we have of coming into this place to worship you. Father God, we want to say thank you to you for the love that you have poured into our lives, for the love that you demonstrated on the cross when you sent your son Jesus to be our Lord and our Saviour. We thank you, O God, for all the hope and for the promise that is ours in him. We thank you, O God, for these moments together with you. We bring you our praise. We bring you our worship. O oh Lord, our God, we praise your name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. O oh Lord, our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to share with you uh, a couple of things. Um, you're all familiar with Spring Harvest. Yes. Spring Harvest. Spring Harvest is at an annual event around the Easter time, um, and it takes place at Skegness and Minehead. How many of you have been to Spring Harvest? Quite a few of you. So you know what that's about. And if you don't know anything about it, then Peter Martin is over there, and he will tell you every single thing about Spring Harvest. Is that right, Peter? Not Okay. <laughs> A lot of things, but if you want to know, and at some point Peter will be sharing a little bit more about Spring Harvest this year, but I want to share with you Spring Harvest Holidays. How many of you have heard of Spring Harvest Holidays? Oh, one or two of you. How many of you have been on a Spring Harvest Holiday? Ooh, I need to talk to you about Spring Harvest Holidays. Well, Ruth and I have had the privilege of being involved with Spring Harvest Holidays for a number of years. I've been uh, privileged to be able to speak uh, on a couple of occasions, uh, usually in the low season, when, when there's just a few people there. I'm not quite there for the big event later in the year. But it doesn't matter because it's a holiday. So Ruth and I go along and we share there and we're also involved in the pastoral work that goes on. And the important thing about um, Spring Harvest Holidays is, oh, it is a holiday. So I've asked Ruth to come up and to uh, share with me something of her experience as well. Now, I'm not sure how the microphones are working, but I'm going to give you this one. Okay. And, uh, and we're going to talk about it. So Ruth, tell us first of all, I mean, it's obvious that it's a holiday, but where is Spring Harvest Holidays? Spring Harvest Holidays is in France, in the Vendée. Um, it's a beautiful part of France, it has a microclimate, so sometimes you can get some blazing, blazing hot days, but sometimes you get some terrific thunderstorms, and actually they're fun too. So uh, yeah, in the Vendée, it's not far from a beautiful town called um, saint gilles Croix de vie it's about two, two kilometres from there, and um, it's just a beautiful part of France. So uh, how do we get there? Um, well, you take me. I take you. <laughs> <laughs> just 
<laughs> you take me. Um, you can get by um, plane. Your nearest um, airport is Nantes. And then it's about a 45 minute journey to, if you drive, to the campsite, to the holiday park. Um, also, you can go by ferry, lots of various ways, and um, you get into northern France and then you can drive down, which sometimes is quite daunting for people, but actually it's a really easy drive. Main roads, main roads, and then there's just a couple of little places that you need to go through just to get into um, Saint-Gilles. So, so, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're going to France, but where are we actually going to? You said it's near a place called Saint-Gilles, Croix de Vie. We know that that's on the coast. Um, but what about the, uh, the holiday park? The holiday park is called Le Paz Octon. It's a four-star holiday park, so it is really beautiful, um, really well maintained. And sometimes you think, oh, holiday park in France, um, packed together and um, lots of people. Actually, it's such a lovely site that each emplacement, it's in their own sort of parameter of hedges and shrubs and things. So you're not all crammed together, and it's really brilliant. OK, so you can go in mobile homes and bring your own tents. Yeah. Um, anything else? Caravans. Take your own caravan. Yeah, and, okay. there's and the tents are pitched there too. So if yeah. you feel that you haven't got a car big enough to take all your stuff, um, then we can. they have the, the tents there very well equipped. They're really good, and the beds are off the floor, so you're not sleeping on lilos and things like that. So they're quite nice. Fully equipped. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got a bit of a video, so rather than just talk about this, we're going to show you this little video now. Thanks. I would say it's a perfect mix. It's just so chilled. You know, you don't feel as though you've got to go to anything, but if you want to, it's there. And you know the kids are just getting really good teaching, and you get some time off from the kids as well in the mornings, which is quite nice. I always feel when I come here, I meet with God in a different way and go home with a, a message, certainly for the year, that I can focus on. The atmosphere has been absolutely amazing. I love the mornings, I love the Bible study, having some bit of fellowship afterwards, having a coffee, then going off out into France. There are some wonderful places to go, wonderful beaches, Just, there's a lot to do. And even the surrounding areas go down to Saint-Gilles, to the night market, it's just an incredible place really. I've just been able to have that downtime just to chill and relax. Lots of things are kind of laid on a plate for you really and you can just pick and choose from the programme and we've really enjoyed just chilling around the pool. I just love the, the freedom we get here, it's just so peaceful. The times of worship this week have been outstanding, it really does feel like a holiday even though you're also gaining a lot of input at the same time. And it's just a really high quality campsite but it's very much a holiday first and foremost and you've got that additional aspect so you've got everything really. So there's so much available and so much going on but what they said on there was it's a holiday first and foremost so how do we fit in all of these other things as well? Okay, so anything on the Holiday Park site is optional to do. Um, it's for the whole family. And the one thing that I really like is that if you have teenagers uh, and you can't get them up for a group in the morning, they actually start their group at about 11.30. So they cater for youngsters that want to sleep in because they've had a late night. So, so that is really good. They're really on form of, of what you need uh, on, on holiday. So in the morning, they have a Bible study, which is completely optional, a little bit of worship, some teaching, goes on for an hour. Um, and it, that's not too early, that's half past ten in the morning. Um, and then a wonderful coffee shop. You all go in there for your lovely coffee um, and have a chat over the uh, lead you up to lunchtime, nice baguettes, they've got brilliant takeaway, um, lots of lovely food. Um, lots of things going on in the afternoons for the family, football tournaments and all that sort of thing. Then in the evening they have, um, or some evenings, maybe not every evening, but they have things like uh, 
the, the pub quiz is a big one. That's usually a pack out crowd. Um, maybe karaoke, maybe. Karaoke, yeah. Karaoke, yeah, you but, like karaoke, Tom, karaoke, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Do that. Also, through the day, um, they have the programme manager um, who actually. Uh, coordinates all the events on site so there's lots of sports cycle riding it's a beautiful place to cycle although I don't speak from experience um, but it, but it is just a wonderful place to to do lots of things at your own leisure and you don't have to come to anything um, that is uh, sort of, of Bible studies and things like that in the evening at about six o'clock while other things are going on there is a worship time um, and, uh, and that's really go good. It goes on for about 45 minutes. And, and you can bring children into that as well. So that, that's quite nice to do before you go off and have your barbecue and meet your friends for a glass of wine. OK, so this is running throughout the year, um, from May till September. But throughout that time as well, there are, there are different themed weeks. So if there's something that you particularly like, you can actually home in on that themed week. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a, a retreat week, so that's, that's fairly quiet, fairly contemplative. That's in the early part of the season. But then there's toddler friendly group. Yeah. Uh, that's a week yeah. as well. What else is there? Um, um, there's a special week for um, people with learning difficulties. Yeah, there's a special week for um, that as well. I think we need to add to that it's a very um, disabled friendly site. They do have um, emplacements of mobile homes that have wet rooms and things for, like that yeah. so that's that's um they try, try to cater for everybody so really this year they're doing something different and it's a gospel choir week as well so if you're into singing then there'll be an opportunity there for being part of the uh, the choir that's arranged we're going to be there so then aren't we'll we? be there for that one yeah um and then there's an anglo french week so if you want to challenge your linguistic abilities mine are pretty useless but i love to have a go and embarrass myself um, but there is an anglo french week as well i think too um we need to say that there are um, other Europeans on site. It's not just for the English. Um, French, um, Belgian, Dutch, uh, Dutch German. Um, German. Um, Swiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all there. They're all there. Um, <laughs> thankfully, a lot of them speak English. But uh, you, you could practice your French. You can, you can. Yeah. Well, we could go on talking about this for, uh, forever because we really love the place and we like to be a part of it. But what we have done is we brought um, some leaflets. And these are available to you on the doorway as you leave uh, this morning. Do take one of those. But there isn't a special appeal that's put out at the moment because there is an opportunity for those of you who feel that you could volunteer to help in some way. So if you're um, maybe a student, perhaps uh, in university, then you could be part of um, the courier team uh, during the, the summer holidays. Um, there's an opportunity for um, children workers as well, youth workers, and just general volunteers to help practically around the site at different times. Again, all of that information is on the website, or you can talk to us about that later. So that is spring harvest holidays and we'd recommend it oh and one other thing it has been known for churches to organize a party to and all go, go together, together. <laughs> so start saving and let's go together and uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to be a part of that we're very happy to answer any questions um, if you've got any thoughts and things yeah, of course sure. pete's over there as well okay thanks ever so much ruth you can uh, go now and i'm going to uh, Yeah, don't go all the way, just <laughs> We're going to pray together. So let's pray. Father, thank you for um, the work that goes on around, um, around the country and, and in different parts of the world that's promoting you and promoting uh, opportunities to be together, to fellowship together, to worship together and to learn together. So we just want to pray now for the work of Spring Harvest in this country and Spring Harvest holidays in France. We trust that uh, as this is part of your vision for enriching your church, that you would empower and enrich by the work of your spirit, that you would be at work in those who are speaking and teaching and leading worship and those who will be there. May it be a restful time, may it be a holiday, but may it be a, may it be a super time just to be with you. We pray your blessing upon this work in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks. Um, would you like to stand with me? And we're going to continue.
continuous in worship. for the children and young people um, as they go out to their groups. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for the young people and the kids in this church, and we thank you that there are so many of them. And we just pray for them as they go out to their groups now. Father, would you be out there with them? Would you inspire them and teach them and excite them um, and light them on fire for you, Lord? Um, And we pray this in your name. Amen. Kids, you are free to go. And the rest of you can stay standing if you like, because we're still singing. (laughs) We taught this song a couple of weeks ago. Um, Lovely song, so do try and join in if you can.
Amen. Please be seated. So I've talked to you about going away on holiday. This morning I want us to think a little bit about having some time out. How many of you are familiar with that phrase, time out? Okay, a definition of time out. Let's see if this, get this to work. Uh, Press that way around might help. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. (laughs) Try again. Mm, I know what. If I turn it on, (laughs) that might work. (laughs) Sorry about that. Guess I need some time out. (laughs) A definition of time out. A brief suspension of activity. A break especially a suspension of play in an athletic game, or a quiet period used especially as the disciplinary measure for children. (laughs) Have you used it? I have to confess that that second definition is one that I am most familiar with. Uh, From time to time, when our son was a lot younger, we would have moments when such a call was necessary. He would be directed to the bottom step of the stairs and told to come back when he was ready to talk. Mark, time out. And he would go. I'm not sure if this is a good sign, but there were occasions when he may have been challenged about something and he would declare to us, Mum, Dad, I'm taking time out. (laughs) And he would go and sit on the bottom step. It worked. It worked for us and it was fine. Without doubt, I think there are times when we would all declare we need some time out. Not because we've been in trouble, but generally. Time out. To have a good cup of tea or a coffee. Uh, Go for a nice walk. um, Or just a bit of peace and quiet. We all need some time out. To rest, to be refreshed, and to be renewed. Now, there are numerous reasons why this is necessary, and I think what I'm going to be saying is very much obvious to many of you. You're probably familiar with it. Certainly following the last couple of years of of pandemic, uh, many are just wanting to get away. But for some, it may be time out from the pressures of work. Maybe you've been somewhat overwhelmed by demands, perhaps even weary with disappointment. Uh, perhaps in a place of discouragement at the moment, and you just need to get away, stop the world, I want to get off, that kind of feeling. Those of you with very young children may be just exhausted, and you just need a good sleep. So the list goes on. Now, I know I'm stating the obvious here, and as one who is recently retired with supposedly so much more free time, I still need to hear it. There comes a point where we need reminding, we need time out. And to take time out, it's not selfish, nor is it something that we should feel guilty about. It is actually necessary. Because there are so many pressures and high expectations on people these days. We need to be able to step aside. And amongst the many things that have been created, so-called to make life easier for us and to save us time, they tend to have increased the pressure on doing even more. Are you with me? Do you know what I'm talking about? We're probably familiar with the advice that we need to have a good work-life balance. The need for healthy eating, a balanced diet, regular exercise and good sleep. We so recognise the need for rest for our physical and our emotional well-being. But I want to share with you this morning something else that's pretty obvious. We need time out for our spiritual well-being as well. (coughs) I need to say at the outset, this is not an excuse to opt out or to avoid any responsibilities that we have. And I hope we'll see this as we continue. The need for rest is a biblical principle. 
It's there in the scriptures. It's there in the creation story. If you look in Genesis chapter 2, God is the only one who does not need rest, yet he included it. In the story of creation, he set an example. He created for six days, he worked for six days, but then he rested from all the work that he had done. Not because he was tired, but to set the standard, I think, for us to follow. Rest is part of our lifestyle. If we go to uh, the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, it's mentioned even there, resting on the Sabbath was a requirement of the law. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, the scriptures say. Although it's worth noting here that this Sabbath simply means rest and is no longer a specific day as it was meant in the original. Again in the Old Testament, in Leviticus chapter 25, we see how even the land also needed to rest. And this is still valid today. The land benefits from resting, to have a period when the ground is allowed to restore and to renew itself. I was talking to a farmer friend of mine just to clarify that and said, does this still happen? And he said, yes, it does. Perhaps not for a whole year. We sometimes now put what we call a cover crop over it, which doesn't take out of the soil as, as much as it needs, but it actually puts back into the ground the good ingredients. It, it enriches the soil for a future good harvest. So it's valid. It's part of our creation story. And throughout the scriptures, there are numerous calls and invitations to be still, to set time aside, and specifically to be able to spend time with God. Each time, there is value and a broader gain from taking some time out. Our verse for today, you're probably thinking we've got away without a Bible reading. Well, this is it, actually. It's not very much at all. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 and 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Now if we put this passage into context, as Mark records it, this is in chapter 6, Jesus had returned to his hometown in Nazareth, but the people there were quite sceptical about him. They didn't like what he was doing. Who are you to be saying these things? Who are you to be doing these kind of things? And such a barrier of unbelief and lack of faith restricted Jesus in his ability to meet their needs. From chapter 6 and going on into those verses, we then read how Jesus sends out his disciples to travel in pairs, to preach repentance and healing. A process that demanded that they lean entirely upon God for all their resources. They weren't to take anything with them. They were just to go as he said and talk about him. And in his name, make a difference in people's lives. If you read through the chapter a bit more, Mark then inserts um, about the death of John the Baptist, the cousin and the forerunner of Jesus. And maybe this is there as a possible reminder of the cost of actually following Jesus. There were going to be demands. It was going to be challenging. And there would be those who would reject you. The focus then in the passage returns to Jesus. The disciples, having been away, come back, they're keen, they're eager to share their experiences, their stories, what has happened. And no doubt amongst them there was a, a mixture of excitement and, and possible amazement because of what they've seen happen in the name of Jesus. And clearly there was some exhaustion. It had been a, be a busy time. And we know that the people were still gathering around. They were continuing to meet wherever Jesus was. They were intrigued, they were attracted by what they'd seen and heard, and they wanted more from Jesus. So he says to his disciples, come with me. Come with me. Now, as I said, there are many invitations in the Bible. In fact, the word come, according to uh, Bible Gateway, occurs over 2,100 times in the scriptures. Isaiah proclaims, come. All you who are thirsty, come to the waters and drink. 
Jesus said in John chapter 7, If any man thirsts, anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He says elsewhere, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. I will receive you. You can be with me. In James, we read the words, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Another invitation to come, come close. And as you come close to him, so he will come close to you. John chapter 8, I am the light of the world, says Jesus. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Another invitation, come, follow me, live in the light of my life. A well-known verse is Matthew chapter 11 and uh, verses 28. I remember as a child in Sunday school, do you remember the old Sunday school anniversaries? Those of you who are as old as I am probably do. And, uh, and in those days, you were, every, all the children would line up on the platform and they would be dressed in their Sunday best and we'd all have to learn something and, uh, and recite it. And I can still remember today the verse that I had to recite in front of the church. And I remember it in the old AV version. <laughs> Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You know, sometimes we think it's not worth going over and over the scriptures and learning things, but that has stayed with me forever. I was quite young and don't remember feeling heavy laden, not even sure I understood the verse. But on Tuesday, the 2nd of February, which is just Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Yeah. It will be 53 years since I was baptised and I responded to Jesus' invitation to come. And as he said to me, come, he has never left me. And even though I've wandered away, he's always been saying, come, come back. We are invited to come to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus, to have life, to drink from the waters of life. But here... We hear him say, come and find rest. Come with me by yourselves. And to do that, we need to make a decision. To do that, we need to make a decision. We need to decide to take time out with God. Just as we need to decide to follow Jesus, to accept his invitation to come, we need to decide to spend time with him. And that decision needs to be a regular event. It is not a one-off decision. We need to make it a healthy habit to come to him. I read these words. The seed of a, every habit begins with a single decision. And as the decision is repeated, a habit sprouts and grows stronger. Now, that can be applied into all sorts of bad stuff that we might take a, get into habits of doing. But let's apply it to this one. If we consistently and constantly decide to come and to follow, he will not let us down. And it will become so much a part of our life to spend time with him that it won't be any effort anymore. And like in any other relationship, it will not grow if that life that we have together is not shared. If time is not spent with each other and if communication is limited or just one-sided, and by that I mean we might have something to say, but if we don't give time to listen, the relationship will not be fed and it won't grow. Are you with me on that one? It may seem obvious, but unless we consciously decide to give time to God, there's a danger we won't do it. You see, I love meeting people. I love saying, let's have coffee. Let's meet together. And I do it a lot. But as with so many other things, if I don't put it in the diary, if I don't fix it, it may not happen. But if it's in there, it can always be postponed if something else comes up. But it won't be forgotten. You know, the way of the world is not conducive to us taking time out. All things will conspire against such a decision to take time out for God. 
and there will never be a convenient time to wait for. Jesus says, come with me. Not with a book or a phone or even an agenda. He just says, come with me. And the second thing he says is, come with me to a quiet place. Verse 32 of this passage actually says, to a solitary place in another version. <laughs> come with me to a solitary place. Chance would be a fine thing, maybe some of you are saying. Indeed, this is easier said than done. And certainly with the demands of work and family and children and, and everything else that you might have to be dealing with. It's hard. But as you see from this passage, even Jesus' plans were scuppered as well. And the solitary place that he and his disciples had was limited to the boat journey across the sea. But it's about finding a place and a moment to be with God. Maybe a special room, a chair, or even a walk. I love the story of Susanna Wesley, the mother of John Wesley and Charles Wesley. She was, in fact, the mother of, get this, 19 children, of which, sadly, only 10 survived. But she still had 10 children. And as the wife of an Anglican rector who was often away for various reasons, she ran the home and homeschooled each child. She took her relationship with God as seriously as her duties as a wife and a mother. Somehow, according to her biography, she would spend at least an hour every day with God. And she would do this by sitting in her chair and putting an apron over her head. In other words, do not disturb when the apron is over my head. Now, I'm not suggesting that we all go out and buy aprons and find a chair and put them over our head. Um, but we do need to find that place, that place that is right for you. I'm sure I don't need to remind you that Jesus often took himself off to a quiet place. In the early morning or while it was still dark or going up to the mountain, he would go away to a secluded place. Someone has said that uh, if you don't take time apart, you will fall apart. Probably or possibly based on the quote from C.H. Spurgeon who said, a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Isaiah chapter 40 says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Matthew, again, says, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Another translation uses the word, go into your closet. And your mind, as it did with mine when I used to hear that, would suggest the water closet, the WC, the loo. Well, if it's the only place you can get some privacy, why not spend time with God there? But actually, it refers to the inner room, uh, the store closet, as it would have been. And that would have been an unlikely place, but it would certainly be in one where one could be private, close the door, and be alone with God. You know, it's when you step aside from the routine, even for a short time, where you can reflect on what's going on in that moment in your life, in your situation, in your circumstances, and perhaps just ask, God, what are you saying to me today? with a heart and a mind ready to listen. Come with me to a quiet place. And finally, get some rest. Get some rest. Now, for some, that might mean falling asleep. I'm just looking around at the moment. <laughs> I fondly remember an elderly lady in my first church who often fell asleep in my sermons. I tried not to take it personally. Someone told me that she obviously needed the rest and if I could lead her into God's presence where she felt safe and secure and be blessed with sleep, I could do no more. 
The silver lining is that she always thanked me for the service and the sermon <laughs> at the end of the day. Some of you, I'm saying, do need some sleep. That's okay. Do it. I've known people who've slept only a handful of hours each night and worked hard six or seven days a week, sometimes involving a long commute. And it's a known fact that a lack of sleep, as well as affecting any decision-making you might be going through, can lead to burnout and to other health problems as well. Even for Christians, and even in Christian work, I confess that as a minister of the church, Sometimes even my expectations of my church members have been too high. I came across this little verse as I was preparing. It said, Mary had a little lamb which was given her to keep, but then it joined the local church and died from lack of sleep. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Jesus was subjected to limited human limitations. He did get tired. He took some time to rest. Rest can be defined as to relax in peace, to gain refreshment. I looked up the word relax, and that further means to become loose or less firm, to have a milder manner, to be less stiff. Rest and relax. Because we can trust God, we can rest in his presence, we can relax our grip on life's demands, on work, even family, as we give them over to God. We can press the pause button on the routine, perhaps even use the delete button on something. We can tune out of distraction and retune into the wonder and the faithfulness of God. We've sung some beautiful songs this morning that have reminded us of the grace and the love and the wonder and the, the immensity of our God who has done so much for us. We need to tune in to those things again. And as our energy wanes, so we recharge in God's presence. The place of rest has to come with intention Time out with God leads to a time of refreshing and restoration. Time out is only temporary. It's not a permanent state. Just as holidays are limited and we return home and back to work and back to the normality of life. So time out with God actually leads to mission. To being able to serve him. We've got some amazing projects going on within the church where we want to do acts of kindness with people. Do you know, if we do it in our own strength, then we are limited. But if we do it in the strength of the Lord, amazing things can happen. We see in Mark chapter 6 that the crowds were already gathered when Jesus and the disciples landed on the other side. And it was straight away back into work. Moved with compassion, Jesus began teaching again and the disciples were then involved with the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 they were pushed out onto the front line again. And if we want to be effective and involved in God's work, we need to spend time with him. We may be gifted, we may be capable, and especially in Christian ministry and mission, we can do our best. But only the work enhanced and dependent and charged by the Holy Spirit will be lasting. It's God who completes the work. I'm drawing to a close and we're going to uh, conclude with uh, a couple of songs of worship that will bring us um, together and um, hopefully into God's presence. But just a couple of things to say. I want to suggest to you that you cannot rely solely on Sunday morning teaching and corporate worship in church on a Sunday <coughs> You cannot rely simply on attending your life group for fellowship. These things are very important for our growth and they help us. But it's our personal time out, time out with God that actually makes the difference. So I ask the question, when was the last time you simply had time out? With Jesus. I want to encourage you to make that decision, to find time to do it. 
Maybe use some Bible reading notes to assist or have some worship music just to help you get into that place. Perhaps you need a prayer guide that is useful. There are many things, many tools available just to help. But it's your decision that makes the final, um, the final act. It's important to be still in the Lord's presence and allow him to refresh and restore your soul. Jesus says to you, come with me to a quiet place. Get some rest. Be still and know that I am God. Let's come into his presence. Hannah. You're welcome to stand or to sit and reflect or whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm just going to sing some songs. spend these moments together as we seek to turn our eyes upon you we pray that you would help us because we are weak and sometimes our intentions are far greater than our actions but Lord we do pray that you would help us to find that place where we can spend time with you and know you touching our hearts touching our lives we know so much in our heads and we feel so much in our hearts but we wanted to connect and we want to be able to look upon your wonderful face and put this world into perspective as we see our journey with you. We ask you, Father, to help us and to guide us, to strengthen us and to reassure us. Give us that hope that we know that as we turn to you that all other things can fade away. And we'll be finding the strength and the energy to deal with daily living as we serve you. As we continue in these moments of responsive worship, let's enjoy the power of God's love. And we want to say as well to you at this time that if 
God has been speaking to you and challenging you about your moments with him. If you want prayer, if you want someone to come alongside you, if you'd like some assistance in that, someone just to pray with you now to kickstart you off in making the right decision, then that opportunity is available as we close our service this morning. Please don't neglect the opportunity that God gives when he says, come, spend time with me and have some rest. So our service comes to a close. Once again, I just remind you that if you want someone to pray with you, if you'd like to, then there'll be opportunity perhaps on this side uh, is a good place or wherever you are and maybe somebody come alongside you and pray with you.
I want to encourage you as you go out today to be encouraged. I hope I haven't made you feel guilty. Um, that's not the intention, but it is to encourage you to come close as you are invited by the Lord Jesus. Um, I'm going to close with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. The Lord bless you and keep you. Go in peace.